Hey folks, uh, <laughs> welcome to uh, Artificial Life Creation, T plus three and swimming. It's about the fish. Uh, um, so the goals for this time was number one, to submit a paper to the A-Life 23 uh, conference. Uh, I did that, talk about it a little bit. Uh, number two, to get coordinated movement of multiple different cells in a multicellular creature. That's what we just sort of saw. Uh, uh, also to get uh, Companionate Caring, my dad's book that we just published in stores, meaning uh, on, uh, on the web. And, and and we did that. I'll show you. And and of course, always have uh, big fun. It was a mixed bag. Uh, I'm struggling with this multicellularity stuff, but uh, you know, it was fun when stuff worked. And and there was there was there was good fun uh, in various spots. Okay, so the schedule. Uh, we were supposed to have coordinated movement uh, this time. Eh, we sort of semi have coordinated movement. You know, the fins kind of bounce along behind, but they're doing better than they were last month. And, and that's all I can really uh, hope uh, for myself. And in addition, uh, coming up next month uh, in May, is supposed to be junctions and intercellular signal signaling, but it really, we have to have something like that in order to do coordinated movement. So I've already kind of reached ahead to that, and I'll talk about that a little bit today. Uh, um, all right, fish got to swim. Uh, uh, you know, uh, there, there's a person, uh, Samter, who's been uh, re uh, catching up on the videos for the last several months, asking uh, lots of good questions. Uh, and in a way, you know, sometimes the questions are a little bit challenging, uh, uh, and I don't actually get enough time to, to go back and, and give good answers to all of them, but I, I do sometimes. I try to. A and I have to say that... Um, you know, figuring out how to respond to a, a pointed question, you know, like that, you know, polite and everything, but you know, saying, yeah, it seems like this was kind of, you know, pointless. <laughs> uh, the system becoming rather bespoke, so getting very specific. Uh, um, and, you know, so my reply to this is that, you know, well, we, we have this idea of like major transitions in evolution. When you're doing engineering bottom up, that you're going to have to build the pieces and then you're going to build a thing out of the pieces. But you're not done there because then you're going to step back and make machines that are bigger and slower and use the thing that you made out of the pieces as a piece in the next level and so on and the major transitions in evolution from chemistry to biology to multicellularity to societies and interplanetary hoo-ha uh, um, are all examples of that that we keep stepping back make machines that are bigger and slower and use what used to be uh, the pride of place of a single thing as now just a mere uh, component of a larger system uh, um, and, and, and structure at all scales ended up being sort of the, the, the punchline of the artificial life paper I submitted. Uh, so uh, this is part of what's going on. Multicellularity is, is making that next step. We've been working at atoms and molecules up to a single cell. And that was <laughs> pretty good challenge all by itself. But now we're trying to go to the next level and it's hard. Why is it bigger and slower? And, and part of it is the design that we're now up at this multicellular level. The language itself doesn't really know anything about a multi. The language is still about event windows, atoms, sites, and so forth. So I'm writing a lot of code. I'm not feeling good about the code I'm writing. I'm cutting and pasting a lot. Uh, the design that I'm going for is getting out ahead of the tools. And, you know, on the one hand, you say that's bad. But on the other hand, you see, this is a, a design foray that we're trying to get out into the wilderness and, and spring the bear traps to uh, find the deadfalls so that we could help figure out what kind of tools we would want to help us uh, the next time around rather than think we can sit in our abstract armchair and just derive what the tools ought to be without actually getting out in the field. So one of my worries is, you know, multicellular menagerie, you know, when I started this six month run, I was thinking, oh, hey, you know, I'll just knock out a new multicellular creature every month. And so the first thing that I made was, you know, add two little half multi half size cells next to a full size cell and call them fins. You know, that was so trivial and I'm still on it. The... <laughs> <laughs> the, the the fish the the fish swimming may be the only thing in the menagerie you know maybe there's just gonna be a whole bunch of little fish swimming along we shall see so but along the way to getting there there's been a lot of progress and uh, part of it is, you know, in the in the single cell system, uh, the the edge of the cell, the membrane at the edge of the cell had basically one job, which is to say, you know, is there anything out there 
Is it a wall? Is it the edge of the universe? Is it another cell? Anything. Uh, and I just want to stay away from it because I want to, you know, keep from getting overrun, keep getting into it and so forth. But in multicellularity, it's not that simple because some, you know, we have to do identification friend or foe to some degree because if it's a, another cell out there that's part of us, that is part of our coordinated collective, then we want to, we're, we're more willing to stay close to it than it is if it's some kind of random. So there's this concept now called corn distances where uh, the M base atoms, those are the innermost membranes uh, uh, that are right next to the edge of the hard cell three grid itself. They talk to each other and they think they localize themselves with respect to each side. So the corner distance of zero is how many pockets there are. Uh, I'm very, excuse me for a second here. I've got uh, terrible, terrible allergies. You can probably hear it in my nose. Uh, um, how many pockets clockwise and anti-clockwise this particular M base is, and they all figure it out. So, so this one up here is three pockets clockwise and one pocket counterclockwise. This one is zero clockwise and four counterclockwise and so forth. So with corner distances, you get two pieces of information. You can add up the corner distances and figure out how long the side is, which tells you how big the cell is, to, in a sense. Uh, um, or you can look at the specific numbers and tell where you are, how far clockwise you are along whatever side you're on. Uh, and the next level out, the cyan uh, uh, M sensor atoms, they pick up the corner distances now from the M bases and the intercellular goo, the brown stuff, which reaches out quite far, picks up the uh, uh, information from the M sensors or the M bases, whatever they can happen to see, and carries it out further. And finally, the neighboring cells uh, in this case, there's a new special kind of hard cell grid atom called an edge HG that has additional behavior just because it's on the out outer edge of the diamond. It now has inbound corner distances. So what we saw out over here, uh, where is it? There it is, an M base saying I'm one clockwise, four counterclockwise. That went out through the uh, M sensors into the intercellular goo and eventually reached this edge. So this guy can now say my neighbor Number one is size five, and number two, they are uh, we are approximately at uh, one clockwise, four counterclockwise on that cell, and that's how the uh, fish fins are now uh, trying to localize themselves by looking at that corner distant information that's coming in from the neighboring cell, uh, and vice versa. The position of the fin is being transmitted by the same mechanism to the fish bod, the fish body. And now the fish fins and the fish body each have a special controller atom that rides up right and sits right next to the root and looks at all this information come in and overrides what the root would normally do uh, as far as moving around and trying to get away from everything. All that behavior is still there, but we're overriding it to say, no, 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 that's a friend. Let's stay closer to it than you want to and so forth. And if something goes wrong, if the uh, controller dies, then free will the lower level. That's that, that's my new definition of what free will means. Free will in an API means you, know, you have nothing to say and you let the implementation do whatever it wants to do. And that's free will at the level of that API. So the fins in the body are now mutually servoing each other. The fins are trying to stay in the middle of their assigned size. The, the body is trying not to get too far out ahead. And, you know, it, it, it kind of works. And, it, you know, it worked well enough that I put it on the grid. And, you know, it's just starting, so there's just a, a little bit of this. Uh, um, but uh, it, it's doing all right. Uh, the MFMS simulator is carrying over to the a, a, a T2 matrix. Yeah, I, I've officially renamed uh, uh, this the thing that we're looking for, the hardware. I'm calling it the matrix now, not to put too fine a point on it. Uh, um, so, you know, uh, the controller, the fish bod controller, see, look at that. Uh, uh, it's going down, it's changed its mind, it's going up, it's cruising along. Uh, um, and the fact that it was going a little bit uh, left and right there, that was the servoing to, for the body trying to stay in between the two fish and, and help it out, the two fins, and help it out and so forth. So progress, progress it is. 
big science. Uh, I wrote an eight-page paper for the Artificial Life 2023, submitted it with two whole minutes to spare before the absolute drop deadline, went and got some sleep, came back to this thing saying, uh, you have 24 hours to meet this requirement for, that you have to anonymize your paper. I've never done a anonymized paper submission. This is the double-blind concept. You always, you never, well, in almost all cases, you don't know who the reviewers are, but here the reviewers aren't supposed to know who the author is. And so I had to Google all that and figure out what the rules were and so forth, and I'm still not completely sure what the rules are, but this is what the, my affiliation now looks like in the paper that I submitted. And the, the conference, the official people in the conference said it was okay and it's off getting reviewed and so on and so forth. But during the review period, you have to be careful about uh, social media. Uh, like that. You're supposed to not try to drive it out there. So I'm not talking about what the title of the paper is or any of the guts of it and so forth. We'll probably talk about that next month, assuming the um, the reviewing period is will be done by then, which I think it will. Uh, uh, so that's going out there. And again, like I said before, a lot of the stuff that came out of conversations that we have had, you know, folks in the crew in the Discord questions and YouTube, all of that stuff has re-emerged uh, in, in the discussion of the paper. And, you know, I, I, I am biased, <laughs> but yeah, uh, you know, we've got a movable, healable, growable, programmable, inheritable replicator. Uh, it's a little bit awesome. It's a little bit awesome. <laughs> so we'll see. Uh, all right. Uh, so that's big science. And finally, Companionate Caring. This is my dad's book that was bringing out uh, just because I wanted to get the words out there and also to help figure out how this whole self-publishing thing, the goal for this month was to get it into the stores. Uh, it is now in the stores. Uh, you can buy it at Amazon. You can buy it at Walmart. You can buy it at BarnesandNoble.com. Uh, you can buy it at bookshop.org, uh, and they even give a little bit of a discount. Uh, uh, most everybody is selling it for list price, $24.99. It's expensive. It's a short book. It's it's not meant to be <laughs> a number one bestseller. Uh, on the other hand, uh, you know, look at this. Look at this. Uh, uh, we've sold seven copies. <laughs> really doing numbers now uh you know thank you to everyone uh, um and you know uh, especially uh for the folks on the live stream i so appreciate people who managed to you know find it find the time to show up at the you know the actual appointed hour uh um so I'm giving away two copies of Dad's book uh, to the first two folks who say "companionate caring okay" in the YouTube live stream chat, and somehow get me a physical mailing address associated with whatever their handle is uh, uh, sometime today. Okay, and that's just you know just a little bit. Uh, this is this is all me trying to pretend to be a. Uh, <laughs> marketing, you know, instead of like whispering in a well, which is my preferred form of marketing. Uh, uh, so hopefully uh, a couple of folks who will be interested in taking a look at that uh, will we'll get it and, and that'll be fun. And that's it. Uh, uh, the goals for a month from now is clean living fish. I mean, the, what we saw was one big mess. Uh, I would also like to have a second species started. That might be too ambitious. Like I said, maybe the menagerie is going to be all fish. We'll see. Uh, uh, also, some first draft, some brainstorming about plans for the second half of 2023, because this is only taking us part way. And of course, more big fun. And that's it. Thanks so much uh, for stopping in, whether in the live stream or coming back to look at it at any time. And I hope to see you next time.